Kia ora pisana. Welcome to our latest edition of Soma. Leo Tuna Soma, James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. And we're going to talk about how to gain wisdom, how to gain wisdom in a trial. How to gain wisdom in trials. Let's start from here. It says this. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without approach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person might not, must not suppose that he will receive anything from God, from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, wakatu na soma biblia, nikitu muhimu kusana kuona, what is the main thing that is being taught? We can see this right here, lacks wisdom, right? If any of you lacks wisdom, and so that's kind of the main statement that James is making right here. Look for this thing. You can see everything kind of points back. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. If any of you lacks wisdom, make sure you ask in faith, not with doubting, et cetera, et cetera. And then see this word here, for, for that person must not suppose. That word for is a conjunction pointing back again to this main statement. So look for where everything is pointing back to. And this is first statement here, if any of you lacks wisdom. Now, in the midst of uh, the book of James, James chapter 1, um, verses 2 through 3, there's a, there's, there's a famous verse in here that a lot of us knows that consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of various kinds. And so James is talking about people who are going through various difficult trials. And one of the things that people can um, g- g- struggle with in the midst of a trial is wisdom. How do I live through this trial wisely. Now, James, he talks about in um, James in verses four, right above us, he talks about in the midst of trials, live steadfast or persevering, push through in this trial, not staggering in your faith, but instead remaining firm and stable in the midst of your faith. And when you do that, when you're steadfast in your faith, um, what's going to happen is that you're going to be mature. He says, you'll be perfect, complete and lacking in nothing. But in order to now remain steadfast in the midst of trials, we need wisdom. We need wisdom. Now, there's a lot of things that, you know, James could talk about because when you're going through a trial, there's a lot of emotions you're going through. You can have um, guilt, like you may feel guilt in the sense of, you know, I'm going to write this down. You could have guilt, right? Like you could feel a lot of guilt um, in the sense of, if I'd have just done this better or said this differently, then I mean, you can have confusion, right? You can have confusion. Like, I, what do I do? What do I say? How, how can uh, I handle this the best way so that way I can remain steadfast in my faith? You need wisdom in the midst of such confusion. You can have fear. I, what's going to happen to me? I feel like I'm out of control in the midst of this trial, but at the same time, I want to remain steadfast. How do I live through all this? Maybe you have anger, like in the sense of, "Ah, I'm just so frustrated and angry at the trial that I'm going through. And anger a lot of times gives way to despair or depression, even hopelessness. Um, And there can be a lack of motivation as a result of that despair, hopelessness that you're going through. Just continue to press through in this trial and to remain steadfast. And instead of James, you know, talking about every one of the potential emotions you can go through, in the midst of a trial, he just addresses everything at the root cause. You need wisdom. In order to overcome the guilt and see things, I need wisdom on how to not be let guilt overwhelm me in a trial or confusion or fear or anger. I need wisdom. And so James kind of comes right down to it and specifically to the root issue here of in order to now remain steadfast in the midst of a trial when I'm going through hard times, I need wisdom. And so Now, the question is, how do I get this wisdom? How can I get wisdom in the midst of difficult trials? James now talks about two different ways. He says, first of all, ask God, right? Ask God. That's what he talks about. When you lack wisdom, you need to ask the Lord. The Lord is the one who's the source of all wisdom. He's the source of all knowledge and everything. He's the one who knows why he's allowed this trial to come through into your life. And he's the one that now is going to help you, strengthen you, so that guilt, confusion, fear, and anger don't overwhelm you. But now, whenever you ask God, you know, maybe sometimes guys are feeling, I... 
will God really give me wisdom? Is God really going to help me in this anger? A lot of times we have this mentality that God helps those who help themselves. And so therefore, I got to push through and I got to work through all the challenges that I'm going through in my life. You see, Quady, instead, the Bible says that God wants to give you wisdom. And the Bible, I think it says that he kind of talks about God giving wisdom in a few ways. It says he gives, right? So the Lord gives. I think when you see this word here, give, there's an idea of God is a God of grace, right? He's a God who wants to give you graciously. Grace in the sense of something that, yeah, you may, it's possible that trials come about through some hardship or difficulty, and God's not going to be angry at you um, because I, you should handle this better or whatever. But instead, this is a God who wants to give you wisdom to help you go through this and help you remain steadfast in your faith. So that way you can be, um, strong in the midst of this and come out mature in your faith, glorifying him more. He wants that relationship with you. So the Lord gives, and his gracious God gives wisdom to us. Now, how does he give it? He gives it generously. You don't need to worry about asking for more and more and more and more wisdom to pass this trial in a way that gives God glory. Uh Uh-uh. The Lord will do it. Don't feel like I need to, I, I just went to the Lord and asked this morning, I, or whatever. The Lord gives generously. And now I, this is the thing I think is amazing. He does it to all without reproach. In other words, the Lord's not holding a grudge. There's no grudge, right, with the Lord. He's not like saying, I, if you... You know what, man, I'm sawing how you did this and you should have handled this better. And you know what, Umefanya Dambi, whenever you were going through the midst of this trial, in the midst of this difficulty you're going through, you've not been honoring me. The Lord is not like that. Instead, this is a God of grace. This is a God of grace who doesn't hold a grudge. He doesn't, he gives wisdom to you without reproach. God wants to help you. Even if you've got into the midst of a trial or a difficult circumstances because of some reason of your sin, that Lord still is there wanting to give you wisdom to help you push through in the midst of all that. And I love this promise here, and it will be given to him. God will give you wisdom in the midst of a difficult trial or circumstance. Now, this is something that is so important. So we asked here, how does someone gain wisdom? Well, he needs to add number one, he needs to ask God. And then now number two, he needs to ask in faith. How do you ask God? Well, you need to ask in faith with no doubting, right? And so this is something that James talks about here. Now, when we see this ask in faith with no doubting, I think a lot of guys get confused in this because we see here, so I've asked in faith. Now, I, a lot of times what comes to guys' mind is a, number one, name it and claim it, right? Name it and claim it, as in the sense of um, there's certain distortions of this teaching that, you know, uh, I need to ask in faith with no doubting. Um, the first distortion that we can see in this is name it and claim it. Um, philosophy where Christians are taught that they should name whatever they need and f- in faith and so claim it as given to them. Like this wisdom is mine. I'm speaking it into my, my life right now. The dangers are the misplacing of faith and the raising of unbiblical expectations. Christians are sometimes led in effect to place their faith in the force of their own believing. I believe, therefore it happened. I have strong belief. Yes, I have faith. I will have wisdom. And to the expect freedom from hardship or difficulty or even trial because I've asked for wisdom. What James is prescribing is, prescribing is something different. He says to ask in faith, right? In faith of that this God who's a God of all grace, will give it to me generously. I am trusting that I've asked, and therefore God will do his job. My job is to ask. God's job now is to give wisdom. And he will do it generously to me without reproach. And I believe it'll be given to me. I have faith that God will do what he's supposed to do. This is not, yes, I have said it. I have spoken it because in that instance, you're the one who needs to receive praise and glory, not God. 
because you've named it, you've claimed it, you've spoken it in some sort of capacity. This is a prideful way to look at ways to get wisdom from God. Instead, we just ask and believe that God will do his part. Another distortion of this ask in faith, the thing that comes to people's mind is a willful suppression. Willful suppression of doubt. A willful suppression of doubt, as in, um, I, can't, I can never have any negative thought in my mind, ever. Instead, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to push this down. There's a way of positive thinking. I'm going to manifest this wisdom in my life and trust and believe that I'm going to go through this. I visualize how I'm going to go through this. And there's a willful suppression of any sort of doubt that you have any sort of fear or anger or confusion or guilt. No, I'm not going to think about those things. And there's almost like a way that you feel that you can manipulate God that you've never doubted, not even one time. Like he can't see inside of your mind. That's not true. Sometimes in faith, there is a bit of doubt. I just, to be completely honest with this, there can be a bit of doubting. Now, what does this mean with no doubting? It's not necessarily a doubt in myself, but instead there's a doubt in God, right? I need to ask, I'm not, I don't want to doubt God. And so when I doubt God, what I'm doing is I'm believing in myself. I have to trust myself to have enough wisdom to be able to now break through with all of the guilt and confusion and fear to not overwhelm me. And so therefore, I want to compensate to make myself a little bit better. So when we see here is when it says, ask in faith, that means I'm believing God will do his job to give generously to me. And with no doubting, that means not doubting in God. Sometimes we can doubt in ourselves. And so don't, don't act as if there's going to be no doubt period in your sort of life when you're going through the midst of a trial. But instead, even when you're going through a situation or a moment of doubt of, can I really go through this? Say, God, I need wisdom. Please, Lord, I'm asking for this. And the God of all grace will generously give you the grace that you need to wisely walk through a trial without any sort of difficult circumstance. And so James really talks about here, this is how we gain wisdom in the midst of trials. And when you walk through a trial this sort of way and asking for wisdom, asking for wisdom, what that's going to do is lead to steadfastness. We can see in James 1 verse 4. And steadfastness then leads to maturity maturity in your faith, which is going to help you now enjoy God more, know him more because you're mature and have a better relationship with him. Someone who does not believe that God is going to do his job and give wisdom in the midst of all this is like someone that is um, like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. They're all over the place with their emotions. They're not stable. They're not steady. That person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. We don't want to be known as unstable or a double-minded man or woman because we're not really trusting in the Lord. Let us not doubt that God will do his part to give us wisdom. When you pray and ask for wisdom in the midst of trials, God will give it to you generously. And then believe him that he's going to help you overcome your anger, your fear, your confusion, your guilt in the midst of all sorts of trials that you go through. Trust the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we say thank you. You are a God of all grace who loves to give wisdom to us generously without reproach in the midst of our trials. Thank you, Lord, that you, we can ask you in faith without doubting, and you will provide for us. Lord, let us trust in that. Let us not believe nonsense of name it and claim it, because I've mentally, I believe in the strength of my belief now is the reason that I have wisdom. That leads to pride. And let us not have this willful suppression of doubt where I believe and have these positive beliefs and I will manifest this wisdom in the midst of all the difficulties I'm going through. No, because ultimately, again, that puffs us up and pushes you down. Lord, let us instead trust in you, that you are God who gives generously without fault. And we trust and have faith in you and not doubt in you. We love you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for the wisdom we can gain in the midst of trials. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.